We're back in Miami, here for at the FIU Stadium for the U.S. Open Cup, Miami Classico. Here we are, the home of Miami FC the U in the USL. So neither team right now in their seasons are doing very good. You know, Miami, Inter Miami, six game losing streak. Miami FC, not that great, but they did win their last game. So this should be an exciting game. Last year, the game was very exciting. On the turf, not the friendliest of, of fields. Check out the Miami FC van. The, Inter -Mi uh, the Miami FC uh, branding is pretty good. They do a pretty good job of uh, their branding. We need some of these uh, kind of vans uh, driving around uh, for Inter Miami. Nice job, Miami FC. Fans have barely even had the chance to sit down. I mean, look, the supporters clubs are just now filtering in and Inter Miami is down by a goal. This is your standard Inter Miami BS that, uh, you know, they, they, they always seem to have uh, the need to come from behind. Here they are. Uh, I mean, surprise, surprise, not surprised that Miami FC uh, score an early goal two minutes into the game fans are still sitting down uh your supporters clubs late arriving very very miami time uh, uh, arriving late missing the first goal unbelievable you know uh, it seems that neville is is you know we thought he would be bringing his his top players his number one you know squad because his job is on the line but he didn't he's brought in several uh, what, you know, I would say, you know, B squad players, Kramoski, his son, Neville, uh, you know, Ryan Saylor, you know, several, several of our starters are not playing. Uh, Campana's not playing and, and Joseph Martinez not playing due to uh, concerns over playing on the turf and apparently same, similar kind of concerns with uh, Sergey Kristoff. So we're having to play with several uh, kind of backup players, which, which is normal in a U.S. Open Cup game. But look at those supporters. Inter-Miami did travel pretty good. This is a pretty good turnout for Inter-Miami uh, supporters on a Wednesday night away from home. And a lot of the supporters are Broward supporters at this point of the team's history. But as we travel over, we look and we see the Miami FC supporters. These small group, not to diminish them. It's a, it, you know, I'm glad, I'm happy they've got uh, supporters. They got some nice drums over there, but it is a small group of supporters. A nice turnout here at FIU Stadium. Look at the guy in the uh, Fort Lauderdale striker shirt from the traffic era. Really, really good turnout. It's probably the best turnout they're going to have all year. That's why it's important for the MLS teams to play at the USL home team stadiums. It really does help quite a bit. Great turnout tonight for this exciting game. And it really is exciting. A lot of energy in the stadium. So what's the problem with this uh, in Miami team? It uh, doesn't matter who they play, it seems to be the same problem. They're doing a lot of uh, crosses into the far post and nobody's making the far post run. Borgelin seems to be doing pretty good holding his own, but again, he's making the runs in the middle. There's nobody making far post runs, but yet they keep crossing the far post. They've controlled the game, but possession means nothing. Uh, you know, it's the same old, same old for Inter Miami. You gotta wonder what the locker room is like right now. Neville, I don't think it's much for yelling, but is he yelling? I mean, his job is hot, his seat is hot, his job is on the line. Those fans feel like if he loses this game, he's gone. We feel here at Football Miami TV Day, he's got at least until the Atlanta game, May 5th or 6th, whatever that is, the next home game. At least till then. But it's not looking good. This is embarrassing. They've got to find a way to win. Bring in Campana, whatever it takes. But it, I don't even know if that's it. No changes made here in the beginning of the second half. Gotta wonder what kind of changes does Phil have up his sleeve? Is he gonna wait too long? Is he gonna make some changes early? We don't know, but the, you know, I was hoping to see some changes early on. But the one thing we could take away from this game is that, you know, the difference between USL and MLS is not that great of a, of a, of a distance between the two leagues. Uh, USL, 
uh, team, you know, look, Miami FC right now is a struggling USL team. Inter Miami is a struggling MLS team. They are very evenly matched as we see this corner and nothing comes of it. Again, Miami FC is very well organized. You might see that Inter Miami has some better skilled players, but Miami FC is very well organized. You have Borgel in there almost getting a, a goal. Uh, so we're, we're using his height to our advantage a little bit. Borgelin, I think, has played well. He's, you know, uh, a strong player up top and, and you know, holding his own. But I, he does need another forward, I think, because, you know, they're, if they're going to cross balls into Borgelin, he needs someone else next to him so he could shield the ball, pass it off, something like that. He's made a few good plays. You see him there, uh, you know, challenging the ball. But, uh, you know, again, the, the, the difference between MLS team and a US team, USL team is, is, is not that much. Here we finally make some substitutions. Negri comes in and Yedlin comes in. So Neville is out and, and, uh, and you know, I don't understand the, the, the decision to bring in, uh, you know, defenders in this, in this example. We're, we're, we're losing and we bring in two defenders. Now I know these are defenders that do like to attack but they're still defenders. We need attack right now. We need offensive threat, and we're not seeing that. These are, you gotta question this kind of a change by Neville. It's, it's an odd change, I think. Uh, you know, they're good, they're good players. They do like to push up, but ne Yedlin and, and, and Negri, are they really gonna be big difference makers uh, in this game right now? Or, I mean, can they be what it, it you know, are they gonna score? I don't think so. Finally, finally, we're seeing some attacking players as we see Joseph Martinez and Rodolfo Pizarro come into the game. So we're going to see, and I'm happy to see that Borgelin is still in the game. And that, uh, you know, so we've got Borgelin and, and Joseph teaming up together. Joseph is hungry for that goal. He needs that goal. Gets his first touch in the, in the game right there. Coming back. He needs to maybe come back a little bit more because, you know, that is the biggest problem with this team right now is that our forwards aren't getting service. We like to, you know, bash, uh, you know, Joseph Martinez right now that he's not the player that he once was, and, he, and he's not. But he's not getting the service that, that he needs either. So that, that, that's a, a big problem I see right now. We're constantly going up on the, on the sides here and just crossing it in, hoping for the best. And there we go. Same kind of thing we've seen all year with this team. Crosses in the middle that don't, or, or, or small passes into the middle that don't, that, that don't really mean anything. They don't, there's nothing to, to show for it. More offensive threat has just entered the game. Number 12, Jake LaCava just comes in. Those of you that have wanted to see Jake, I know a lot of people have been wanting to see what LaCava can do of an exciting young draft pick. And so he's getting his chance, he's healthy, and so he's getting to see what he could do in this game, if he could be a difference maker. We've got some attack in the finally in the game. I mean, he's, you know, at times it looks like he might line up as a forward or as a winger. He's now pushing up forward. So he's, we've got three forwards right there. Uh, I think in a lot of this game, he might end up kind of drifting around, playing a little uh, midfield, playing a little forward. But at the end of the day, just an attacking option that's good to see on the field. Is it enough to make a difference? Can he score? Can we get out of this hole that we're in? See some nice uh, play there, but again, just nothing to show for it. Finally, in the 88th minute, Borgelin with the uh, tying goal. After just a few seconds ago, they hit the post. Borgelin with a header. I didn't get it on video, but came fast. We're tied up. Can enter Miami pull this out? Time for the smoke at FIU Stadium. Finally, the fans have something to cheer for. The supporters club. With that last goal, we're now in the dying minutes of the first, of the second half, the dying minutes of the game. You know, there has to be a winner. No winner, we're gonna go to extra uh, extra time or uh, overtime and then and then penalties if, if need be. But 
My Inter Miami pushing forward, putting everything up top to try to win this game. Joseph just uh, off camera, you know, went down, thought it was a penalty, didn't get it, didn't get awarded his penalty. He really needs something like that to, to boost his morale. I think the Inter Miami bench is standing up. Everybody's on edge. The, the feeling inside the stadium is pretty electric, pretty fun environment right now for everybody to, to you know, can Inter Miami on this on this uh, free kick? Can they do something? Can they put it in the back of the net? Can they win this game in the dying minutes, or is it just going to be the same old, same old? And well, there you go. We can't. But at least they get one more shot here in the corner kick. It is like I said. Right now we're in extra time. We are maybe seconds left in this in this uh, game, and we are tied up. And we got nothing here to, to show for it. Uh, Miami FC is going to try to do their part and try to take it up. Ooh, that was a tough challenge by Negri. He doesn't agree, but it was bad. It was a bad challenge. He went in hard. And with that, we are going to overtime. Two 15-minute halves to be played here in the U.S. Open Cup in Miami Classico. And if there's no uh, score, then we're going to penalties. If it continues the way it's been moving, Inter Miami is just itching to uh, score. They're coming close. They're putting everybody up the top. They, they, they're getting chances now. So, hang on a second. 12,099 fans here. Apparently, that broke a, a Miami FC record. Oh, it's a great crowd here. Biggest crowd in uh, Miami FC season. I remember seeing a Miami FC game here played. Uh, I think it was the first Miami FC game. Uh, and they had a Colombian singer, and that was like a 10,000. So this beat that. 12,000 fans here. This side is full. The other side, uh, not so much. But this side of the stands are full. So there we go. Uh, you know, exciting. I mean, this is why you got to come out to the Open Cup games. They're exciting. Win and go home. Win or go home. And uh, right now, I mean, Miami FC, Miami FC uh, they're, they're a good team. They're, they're, they're playing my, Inter Miami well. And these two names are screwing me up left and right. I keep calling the wrong team the wrong name. Messing me up all night. Unbelievable. Here in overtime, Yedlin passes the ball back uh, poorly, poorly back to Calendar. Calendar doesn't have a chance to react. It actually didn't even look like a pass back. It looked like Yedlin was trying to score in his own goal. That was ridiculously bad, embarrassingly bad for Inter Miami. I, I mean, what a collapse, a colossal collapse here. And it's it's looking bad. Can we, can we see a replay? Let, let's look at this. I mean, look at him. Look at I don't get it. It kind of looked like he's just trying to score in his own goal. Thanks to Ryan Saylor for the last minute, you know, heroics. Ryan Saylor, you know, has not had much playing time this year. Phil Neville needs to give him a big kiss on the cheek because that was beautiful. That was a goal by Ryan Saylor again. I'm sorry, I'm not filming the whole game. I didn't get the goal but you can go watch highlights somewhere else. Here you can see the excitement of these very pro Inter Miami crowd. And, uh, you know, let's see, can we see a replay here? No, they're not gonna show us a replay. They don't wanna show us a replay of their own uh, goal. Nope. But as you can see, 28th minute in the overtime, not a lot of time left in this game. Currently 2-2 two -two with uh, that Ryan Saylor goal, but uh, they've got, to win it, the get it's get whoa, whoa, whoa! Everybody's uh, you know, get a little pushy here. Everybody getting ready to clear the bench, a little brawl, a little excitement in the Miami Classico, maybe. Push everybody just needs to calm down a little bit. These kind of games get heated, especially when you know you're trying to dominance in the in the area. You know, Miami FC's whole thing is we are Miami because technically Inter Miami plays in Fort Lauderdale as uh, for now until they finally get their Miami stadium built. So uh, things may change sometime in the future as far as who is actually Miami. Right now, it's uh, it's it's tied 2-2, and this is a horrible performance by Inter-Miami. 
this is weird. I don't get that. This one was weird. The referee calls the game as it's over. All the players are yelling at the referee, saying there is no more time. There's still time left. Look at the clock. He's pointing at his watch, saying, no, 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 I'm keeping the time on my watch. It's it's done. It's, there's no time left. But I've never seen anything like this. Meanwhile, everybody else in the game knows that there's still time on the clock. Look up. There's still time. So he's going to let the game continue. And uh, we still have some minutes. I mean, there's still extra time to play here. There's been substitutions. There's There's been a, a fight. There's been a brawl. So there is still time left in this game for either team to, to, to you know, claim a victory. And Inter Miami is throwing everything. Oh, what is that? They're throwing everything they can at uh, to, to, to win. But they just can't seem to do it. But they're fighting. They're clawing their way through it. And... They've got, let's see what can happen here. Can we get a shot? Oh, bah, hit the post. So close. Hit the post. That is a second post shot by uh, this uh, Inter-Miami team. And uh, that's going to about wrap it up. I think we're going to go to penalties. All right, here we go. Joseph is the first one up for Inter-Miami. That 
give it the ball back. Fans don't want to give it back. Up next for Inter Miami, number 21. Come on, Miller. Oh, that's Miller. I said it earlier. Really well. It's number three. Miller. Yeah, Miller. Yeah, Miller. Yeah, Miller. Another defender. If, if this game said t taught us anything, though, is uh, there's a lot that still needs to be fixed. We barely beat a USL team. I had to go to penalties, but it was exciting. It was so exciting. Hey, Neville saved his job. He lives another day because, you know, if you read the, what's going on on Twitter, everybody's calling for his head, especially after this performance. It was a terrible performance by the team. Let's, let's be honest. It was not good. But... They managed to win. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. They won. They pulled out a victory. And that's it. From here at FIU Stadium. It's fun coming out here. And uh, I like these uh, Classico, these Derby games. They're a lot of fun. Uh, Miami versus Miami. It is a blast. So, with that, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, tune in on Sunday nights. We do a live show. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.